You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or on our new website, ProLeftPod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for October 6, 2017. It's not safe for work. Coming to you live from the calm before an uninterrupted string of fucks. It's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Yeah, and that was, that was the F word uh, not preceded by the word moron. Not no. preceding the word moron, right? No, okay. <laughs> no, which has been just trending a top story all week long. My goodness, my goodness, my goodness. Which which brings us to our fake sponsor of the week, Drick West. Yes, we, we really do have to welcome back into, into our fold, uh, into our good graces, uh, a, a presenting sponsor. And again, the most profitable business in Washington, D.C. at the moment. Uh, the, where, the good Lord split you, emergency farewell party planners. This week, use the code word REXIT, that's R-E-X-I-T, for priority scheduling, or the good Lord split you, because minions of the Trump administration any day may be the last day of your professional life. Like like Representative Tim Murphy, a lot of people Tim. let us know that his he was going to need a farewell party. His uh, political enemies used his uh, hypocrisy against Tim Blue. They Game. did. They did. <laughs> Tim it Murphy, uh, by the way, allegedly and definitely yeah. um, asked his mistress. No true Irishman. <laughs> <laughs> asked his mistress, yeah. uh, suggested that during a pregnancy scare, which turned out to not be uh, real or turned out not to be actually pregnant. Uh, mm-hmm. But when there was a pregnancy scare, he suggested to his mistress that uh-huh. she get an abortion. Which would be after fine. After being all pro-lifey, pro-anti-women oh. oh. yeah. having any rights at all. That's uh, the problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's one of these forced birther types. Yeah. And uh, holier-than-thou types. And it turns out he was banging a babe, not his wife. Yeah. Might have gotten her pregnant. That means he was not practicing safe sex. No, he wasn't. And uh, he, then wasn't he Brexiting. said, you know, why don't you have it taken care of? Well, yeah. you know, that's, isn't that, and then, and then when she called him out on that, said, aren't you the guy who's like, says that life is precious and that women should never, never, never do whatever. And sure. he said, my staff wrote that. Yeah. Okay. So now, he what, is, what and, oh, and, he oh, oh yeah, well, I forget. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I forget what political party he's in, but uh, he, it's not both sides, I can tell you yeah. that. Yeah. And then he, um, uh, one day he said, I'm retiring from the house, and then the next day was, no, I'm gone. I'm leaving. Nah, I'm leaving. I got my stuff. Sorry, Paul Ryan. I think I have to leave. And, you know, that's so. when the, the, the switchboard at Where the Good Lord Split You mm-hmm. lit up. Mm-hmm. Lit up, baby. Mm-hmm. Uh, because, and that's... Uh, we're going to introduce a, a new and perhaps uh, semi-recurring feature later on in the podcast, but it, it might be time to to sort of name check it here. Uh, imagine I'm saying this around an air quoted word. Yeah, but is that really news? Yeah, well, we're um, going to get into that. I also wanted to let one people know about one more thing about Murphy, and that is that um, apparently his staff uh, was like 100 percent turnover. Uh-huh. Um one, he he treated his staff really poorly. Yeah. And uh, engaged in verbal. Uh, uh, Moshiak, who is the chief of staff for uh, Congressman Murphy, Susan mm-hmm. Mosh Moshi, Mosichuk, okay. M O S Y C H U K. Not even going to try. No. Yeah, she uh, would get mad at people for using a paper clip instead of a staple on a briefing yeah. packet. She would call people worthless and call their work garbage or ask them if they had a fucking college degree. She, on and on and on, she had 100% turnover in a very short period of time. And, you know, she was she was making $158,000 a year for to treat everybody like shit. So, yeah. It wasn't so just, basically, he yeah. checks every box. He checks every box. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I refuse to be surprised. How? No, again, I refuse. I to refuse be to be surprised that the pro-life, Bible-thumping, anti-woman, anti-abortion Republican scumbag yep. thought he got his mistress pregnant, and his first re- reaction was, "Oh, get it taken care of," because that's yeah. who these people are. Yep. Period. Yep. Anyway, as you were saying. 
Well, and and I'm sorry, but all of the Republican colleagues who, on the day he decided to retire, then pressured him to resign. Right. You're just covering your own ass. You're not. Uh, yeah. This might interfere with our tax cut. Right. So, right. Out of the way. We're yeah. getting cut yeah. taxes. Don't worry. Yeah. Yours cut, too. And but I also, I also have here. a question for you. What What is this about Harvey Weinstein that somehow Chris Saliza thinks Democrats aren't condemning his behavior? Yeah. I, I, I A, uh, uh, Harvey Weinstein is a, uh, a grabby-handed, uh, sexual predating scumbag. I haven't read anything about anything he did because, you know what? Harvey Weinstein has never sent me a check. Uh, <laughs> he's never appeared on my television He's never told me who to vote for. I'm sure he writes big ass checks for the Democratic Party, and that's sure. over, and that's a good thing. But I, I just well, the, the, his behavior is is like Trump and like the Trump cabinet, and like there yeah, there is a class of people that yeah. thinks everything belongs to me, and I am entitled to all of the pussy in the office, and right. I am entitled to ride on private jets, and I'm in, you know at this level right. we do things this way, right? And, and what now I forget now. Harvey Weinstein is a senator from which no. state? No, he's a cabinet member, right? No, he's a no. okay. He has some from Pennsylvania. No, he has some authority over the policy of the federal government of the United States. He can actually no. decide life and death things. No, 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 he doesn't have. Any, he's another rich asshole who right. is a, a Democrat who writes checks to Democrats. And, and because he's a Democrat, Hollywood. It, it fits into the narrative of look, both sides are are grabby handy, right? right? right. Because because that's what Chris Eliza gets paid to, to say. Yes. Just, and you know yes. he just he sat around for months praying to Almighty God, please send me a liberal who 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 grabs someone's cooch mm-hmm. and. He got it, and that's yeah. great. Good for you, Chris Eliza. It makes absolutely no difference in the debate. Uh, it makes it makes but, absolutely but no difference. But Chris Eliza insists. Why, why aren't Democrats condemning him? Fuck you! I am. Oh, fuck you! <laughs> fuck you! Fuck you! Sideways. Yeah, Chris uh, between, Eliza. Between the leveling of an entire island and President um, um, Pump Fake going yep. down, who I believe we were told by the Mooch could you know spiral a, a, a football eighty yards uh, with pinpoint precision. Lobbing paper towels at the pores in the one spot on in Puerto Rico that wasn't destroyed. Yeah, and apparently uh, between... he wanted to throw cans of chicken, and yeah. uh, they told him, "No, don't do that. You might have might hurt somebody." You know, as God is His witness, he thought turkeys. He could thought fly. cans of chicken could fly. Yeah, but <laughs> between all the other really genuine catastrophes that Republicans have unleashed on this country, mm-hmm. I think it's vitally important for Chris Eliza to get in there. And, and pry his, his little snout back to the trough and say, yeah, yeah. you know, here's the real problem. We got this both because it's just and, and the thing is, it's so predictable mm-hmm. that a, a little fucking ass weasel like Chris Eliza would do this. Yeah. But this would be this would just like give him a boner all day long. Yep. But yep. it makes him so happy when this happens. And and because a it's so fucking rare be Democrats do condemn it. I don't see Anthony Weiner, you know, coming back in no. power in the Democratic Party anytime no. soon. No, no. Um, and it doesn't prove anything other than the fact that, oh my God, look at all the towering hypocrisy on the right. They won't condemn it. They won't touch it. They'll they'll deflect. They'll diffract. They'll the Russia's not real. Nothing's real. It's all fucking fake news. Mm-hmm. We'll say, yeah, he's an asshole. He should go. He shouldn't have done it. He's an asshole. He should go. He shouldn't run a major TV network. Right. Uh, but you know, I- I'm sorry. It, the the and Roger Ailes set up an entire political apparatus, right? To, so that to he could slander look at the people cooch. like me, <laughs> yeah, yeah, to create his own little sexual predator petting zoo, yeah, and, and a crotch couch where his other sexual predator viewers could get you know a half mast over a uh, blonde cooch. That's what the a, purpose of Fox News is, right? On a big pile of Bibles, right? On a big pile right. of self-righteous, we're holier right. than thou fucking Bibles, right? So you know if that gives if that's what gets Chris Eliza through the night, then Chris Eliza is a pathetic little. He's exactly what I think he is. Well, and I thought it was interesting. <clears throat> we watched that a couple of weeks ago. The the uh, panel discussion that Charlie Pierce was on with Chris Eliza. Yeah. Yeah. Where you know, Charlie Pierce did as well as he could. Every time Charlie Pierce opened his mouth, he spoke truth. 
And that right. is pr that was really the full extent of what I'm sure they would allow him to do. And that happened um, two and a half times. So Chris, Chris Saliza, um, they were talking about uh, influence of being owned by a major corporation, you know, and uh, the media being consolidated and so forth. And Chris Saliza said, no one's ever told me at the Washington Post what to write or what not to write. And, and ever, you and I looked at one another like they knew exactly what they got when they hired right. Chris They Saliza. hired you for this. You know, he, this is like... They you know, put the jello in the hot water and they dissolved it and then they made jello and then they weren't surprised when they got jello. <laughs> you know, when they hired Kenneth Branagh to play Hamlet, no one told me how to play Hamlet. No, it's a fucking it's how he, it's Hamlet. This is the this is the job. This is the gig. Right. These are the lines. And we hired you because you do it really well. Yeah. yeah. So you know, but that's again that is who, and we're going to get to this uh, uh, during the Sunday little Sunday show uh, uh, wrap up, yeah. which was just appalling um but predictable and observable this is you know this we're, we're way past the point where this is this should shock anyone yeah. we're now at the point where we need to find the best way to get people at crystal is a fired yep we need to find the best possible most efficient way and if there are these republicans who are suddenly coming to jesus uh and, and you know uh, getting jobs on msnbc saying oh mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. you know chuck my name is charlie sachs and i've been a sinner you know, yep. The only thing I want to hear from Charlie, I don't want to hear, uh, look at his stupid fucking hat, which he has. I don't want to buy his fucking book. I don't give a shit. You've been doing this for 25 years and at, the, at way past the 11th hour. Mm -hmm. The wind shifted and suddenly it was more economically advantageous for you to be shocked that there was gambling going on in this establishment than, yeah. than, than, uh, than it was not. The economic advantage to you was to jump sides and suddenly say, Donald Trump is this thing that happened that I have no idea how we got here. Right. Fine. The only thing I want to hear from Charlie Sykes before he shuts up forever and goes and atones for his sins, which these people never do. They just slip right. into another job. I want to hear from him. Where is the exhaust port on the Death Star? Yeah. <laughs> All I want to know. All I want to know is the names of the mistresses of the people in Congress on the Republican side. Yeah. Who are they? Who are they fucking? I want the dirt on them. I want the Larry Flint stuff on yep. these people. Because yep. that's the only way you're going to stop them. You're not going to stop Apparently them by shaming that's them. What, that is what captures the imagination right. of the media and the public to the point where they have to leave. Yeah. And these yeah. people went drinking with you, Charlie, and you hobnobbed with them, and you had them on your show for a quarter of a century. Yep. All right. Then you know some shit. You so do. it's time for you yeah. to come out and start telling people, where is Paul Ryan's weakness? Yep. Where do we stick the crowbar to pry that that God for that horrifying ghoul of a human being the hell off of our body politic? How do we best destroy the monster you made? And it's not hand waving and jerking off on MSNBC about how atrocious it all of is. There are real specific, concrete, direct political actions that that absolutely no one on the right would hesitate to make, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. uh, if, if, if you handed them this kind of uh, firepower. Yeah. So I want to hear from all those Republican expats. I don't want to hear how sorry you are. Fuck you. It's too late to be sorry. Here's what you could do. You can atone for your sins by showing us the Bringing best these people down to yeah. burn it down to the ground. And if you right. can't do that, then go away. Well, Shut and, and, and there is this is this is the point about media ownership too is who does own charlie sykes yeah. who who is telling charlie sykes that he can't do that uh -huh. and there was a comment on twitter that this, a lot of things have made me depressed this week this was one of them um pointing out that ron johnson you know beat russ feingold twice in 2010 right. and in 2016 yeah. and this week he told a constituent he, which he ron johnson told a constituent that they don't have a right to health care right. and water and food and shelter. Right. Not a single Wisconsin paper covered that story. No, no. And the, that was the point of the tweet was, you wonder why Ron Johnson beat Russ Feingold? The media in Wisconsin doesn't cover the shit he says. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, unless you have a both sides where you can say, and on the other hand, this Democrat did this. Mm -hmm. You don't get coverage. Um, I want to talk just for a minute about uh, depression a little bit. Well, you were just going to segue into that. Yeah, this is something that's going to segue you this into week. that because this has been a very rough week, uh, mm -hmm. starting with the Las Vegas um, shooting Monday morning, waking up to that. Mass murder. Uh, dealing with uh, uh, more attacks on health insurance, more attacks on uh, – we're hearing now that, you know, they're going to do a synthetic repeal of the Affordable Care Act, right. which means basically just cut 
the legs out from under it, either through uh, presidential proclamation or yeah. executive order and uh, not advertising it and not uh, it allowing states. It's, it's total sabotage. <clears throat> This is the and one thing Republicans do well is sabotage. They know how to sabotage that... Democrats' good things, right? Right. Yep. Uh, well, and and in this particular case, it's it's uh, very conscious that that's what they're doing. Oh, sure. And and so that has been depressing me. Then on the personal side, uh, Junior Dude is turning nineteen this month, <laughs> which means that he's already going to lose his chip coverage, his right. children's health insurance plan coverage, because he's aging out of it. Right. And I have not heard yet. I sent in the paperwork on time last month. My deadline was September 15th. I mailed it on the 12th to find out if he can stay on Medicaid or if he has to go on our Obamacare policy. Mm -hmm. I don't know how that works. I don't know. Um, I don't have any information from Medicaid yet as to whether or not he can. he's going to be transferred to adult Medicaid or is he going to need I, – sh I need to have a letter to put him on our Obamacare policy. Right. Um and and then after when when I get that letter, then I don't know how that works. I'm going to have to call and find out. And I don't know whether the phone banks are going to be manned because I don't know who I'm calling, and who sabotaged that. I have I have lots and lots of questions and lots and lots of insecurities right now mm -hmm. about um, the people whose job it is to do this sort of thing. Not their willingness to help me, but their no. ability to help me based on the sabotage of the Republican Party and Donald Trump. Yes. And so I'm scared and I'm scared again. This is like, you know, the 30th time in my son's life since 2008 when I got a divorce that I've been scared that my children weren't going to have what they needed. Right. Um, I'm very grateful. I did call around this week because he needs a new prescription for his medication that he needs to go to school and be a successful college student. Right. Uh, he needs a refill before his birthday. And I wanted to get him into a doctor near uh, the Augustana campus. And um, the amazing thing is uh, I, I was able to call. Uh, there's no on-campus doctor at this particular school, but they provide free rides to doctors from campus to wherever your doctor is in the Quad Cities. They will take you there for free. And they will also take you to the pharmacy if you need to pick up a prescription uh, for free. So they really make it uh -huh. possible for students to do that. Um, so I called around and I found someone online that I thought would be a good match for Junior Dude. And uh, the nurse called me back and said, I'm sorry, she's not taking new patients. However, uh, you know, I have your information here and I can give you the hotline that you call for new patient assignment and they will tell you who's available. I was like, oh, that's great. I don't have to shop all over to yeah. find out, you know, a doctor called that number. And again, the woman on that end of the line was very helpful. I, I told her my situation. I told her that he was currently on Medicaid until his birthday, uh, which is this month. And, uh, she gave me four phone numbers and, um, it be it being Quad Cities, that means that two of the of the four cities are on the Illinois side of the river, and two are on the Iowa side of the river. Uh -huh. And I said, I think he's going to need to see an Illinois doctor because he's on Illinois Medicaid. And she said, No, my, our entire clinic takes both Illinois and Iowa Medicaid, uh -huh. so you're all set. Wait a minute, you can go you can uh -huh. go anywhere. You can cross state lines. That, they're doing that cross state lines. Oh my God! Doesn't that require massive? Compli no, it doesn't require any any no, further. No, because they just bill through the office that their clinic is in because the Quad Cities is really unified, you know, in terms of services. That's how right. they do things. So everyone in their clinic takes both kinds of Medicaid, uh, depending on where you are. Um, I ha I, as I was searching online, there were some people complaining that there are not specialists in the Quad Cities that take Medicaid. And again, you know, this is where we need to get. Uh, universal coverage and at least have a, a sense of, um, I you know, I love the Medicaid for all. You and I have talked about this. I love the Medicaid for all as a starting point for negotiation. I love the Medicaid right. for all as a uh, rallying cry. Uh, I want to see corporations involved in paying for that um, because I don't, I think they get out of it too much. There need to be, there needs to be something where uh, millionaire corporations that are right now sitting on huge piles of cash are involved in the payment for making sure there's universal coverage. And if that means that we keep an employee employer possibility where employers can buy Medicare for their employees, you know, and, and are required to do that. Great. <clears throat> I'm so, agnostic as to how we get to work there. Out. All, all these things need to be worked out. But right. one thing that needs to be worked out is this kind of thing where if you have to go to a doctor on the other side of a river, you're still covered. And right. 
you don't have to worry about that. So then when I finally got someone who was an actual provider, who was taking new patients, who was doing everything, the first appointment she had available was November, <laughs> late <laughs> November. Whoops. So, yeah. Oh my gosh. And I explained to her the situation and she said, you know what? I'm just going to get you in on the 19th. Right. And it was just like, oh. And she said, and this doctor, he's a real cool guy and he's young and your son will like him and be able to talk to him. I take my boys to see this particular doctor. So it was like such mom to mom. It was, I care. I want to make sure you get what you need. Uh -huh. And it made me realize this is, this is sort of the theme of our podcast, which is workarounds, right. right? That there are actual human beings in this country at every level who are going to find a way around the insanity and, right. and make things work. And we'll get there. We're going lots of steps backwards, I feel. Uh-huh. We are. A pretty, at, a, at a pretty fair cliff, I'm afraid. But yep. there are, as always, there are all these people working away who, who will never see a headline and never hear their name mentioned in public and never be applauded at a, at a you know, at a, at a giant dinner who will never be at yeah. a press conference right. who are working well, real hard. Well, never won the Nobel Prize, right. Right. They're who are working, working real hard, hard every day. Just to get you know, right. you from A to B and, right. and realizing, yeah. look, here's the problem. Uh, the assholes who run this place <laughs> let all the machinery run exactly. down, let the exactly. bridges collapse. Exactly. They're, they're, they're the one, they cut all the hoses. They've set everything on fire. But I think we can get you through mm -hmm. this emergency route. You got to take a left at where the, you know, the Piggly Wiggly yep. used to be. Yep. But we'll get you there. Right. And, and they are, they really are, you know, emergency crisis managers all the time, every day. All the day. time. And every person because... that, every time their phone rings, they're making a difference. And I'm so grateful to them. So, um, I have had to uh, take my temperature this week in terms of depression. Yes. And I am so grateful that at one time in my life, I had postpartum depression, which was really bad. I think I've, I certainly have written about that. I have talked about it. Um, it required my pediatrician to call my doctor. He had at first made me promise that I would call my doctor. And after talking to me, he wound up calling my doctor and getting me in to see her immediately. Um, cause I, I was in bad shape and, uh, I've been in pretty bad shape this week, but because I've been taking my temperature in terms of where am I compared to where I was many years ago, 15 years uh -huh. ago, um, I am able to see, and I've got you watching out for me too. I know I do. Uh, just make <laughs> sure if I'm getting to a point where I don't care about anything anymore, you know, crying is okay. Crying means you care. Fine. Crying means you it, things matter to you, and you're yeah. upset and stressed, and that's okay. But if I, I last night I told you this is just really bad. I'm just feeling really, really low and bottoming out here. And then I realized that right before I told you that, I had actually been looking for a knitting project that I had misplaced. <laughs> and I went, oh wait, I am still kind of engaged, and I am still interested in things, and so. I'm not at that real low bottom of the pit level yet. Right. Um, and, and, you know, you asked me, I said, I feel really low right now. I'm feeling like I'm in a really, I'm, I'm in a black place and dark place. And you said, do you need to go to the hospital? And I said, no, I don't think so because I just did this and I'm feeling this way. But all of us need to sort of practice um, taking that temperature and take a break and get away from whatever they need to get away from. Uh, and uh, deep breaths, but um, you had also mentioned Melissa Harris Perry. Yes. There's self care and then there's squad care. Right. And how we take care of each other. Right. And uh, we got it's a, a great letter. Idea. We got mm -hmm. a letter uh, today, and I'm just going to read one paragraph of it. Okay. Um, it. It's from JF, and he's, he writes Your weekly conversation is sublime. You're both very funny, very smart, and I'm sure I'm not the only one who deeply appreciates your work helping people develop an accurate vocabulary for explaining what's going on. I also have sympathy for your situation after hearing you explain your struggles with your healthcare system and the derision and dismissiveness that gets hurled from a huge portion of the population at large at lefty bloggers like yourselves. Mm -hmm. You should be respected advisors in the mainstream, not virtual pariahs, which is the unfortunate result of the clear ascension of the right wing in general and Republicanism in particular. Yep. I am a Canadian. I get to observe what's going on in your country from a relatively comfortable remove, but I still hold a fascination with U.S. Po politics 
And it angers me that lying, callousness, and incompetence is winning the battle for now. Keep up the good fight and keep doing what you're doing. Yours is my favorite podcast currently, and I'm deeply thankful for all the work you do. Mm -hmm. So thank you. That really lifted me and uh, made me feel better, and I, I appreciate it. Uh, and and I wrote a post after Las Vegas. I actually wrote it Monday morning on three things that you could do to, in in light of this uh, horrific crime and tragedy and mm -hmm. avoidable situation, frankly. Um, and it was uh, that you should definitely get involved with Moms Demand Action and other guns right, gun control mm -hmm. advocates. Um, you should write a letter to your editor and let them know how you feel and make sure that the candidates that you vote for are realize that this is a make or break issue for you. And the third one was donate blood. And that is a political statement that I make uh, every 63 days um, is to donate blood. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, you know, I, I think you realize a lot of people, they were so full in the blood donation in Las Vegas that they were yeah. turning people away. Yeah. Um, very grateful for that. So in the interest of doing something to make myself feel better and in the feel better department, <laughs> make a difference. Not, not Pollyanna, not pretending the world is no. anything other um, than it is. But uh, our angel nerd, uh, Theolo GOP, uh, and I have been talking about something that we could do and that I could do uh, to give back to our listeners and supporters and uh, people that have donated to us over um, the years. And uh, she has a contact uh, named Rose. Rose is uh, that makes beautiful jewelry. She's at foxwise.biz. She's an old school blogger. If you were blogging and and involved like we were, you know, 10, 15, whatever years ago, um, you might know her. She was Rose Rose on Fringe Folk. She was Practical Radical and what we did in the, what I did in the war. Um, and so she, back in the day, back in the Bush days, she Ooh. was old school blogging. And now she has a jewelry company, and it's foxwise.biz. She has donated to us 12 bracelets, which can either be engraved or stamped, and you'll get to decide if you win one of these. Um, it's a bracelet that says resist. It has two snowflakes on it right in the middle. <laughs> and then on either side has uh, proleftpod.com. And so it's your little proleftpod snowflake resist brass bracelet or cuff and uh i am contributing um a five dollar gift certificate to donors choose which is one of my favorite charities so that you can give five bucks to your local school or to a school that you ch for instance if you are really interested in donating to hurricane relief you can donate to a school that has been affected by the hurricane mm -hmm. uh, a teacher and so uh, no purchase is necessary to enter, if, but if you are one of our regular monthly donator, donors, you're already entered. If you have donated uh, a check in the past 12, uh, four weeks, you're already entered. If you uh, donated any in kind, like a bottle of scotch and recently, you're already entered. Um, if you would like to enter, you have two ways to enter. You can donate uh, at our website, and there's a special link there to do that. Um, all this information is on our website, by the way. Uh, you can also just send us an email. No purchase is necessary to enter. If you can't afford to donate at this time, just send us an email, proleftpodcast at gmail.com. Make sure the subject line says contrast contest entry and uh, you'll be entered to um, we're going to give away 12 bracelets and 12 five dollar gift certificates one a week for 12 weeks for the 12 days of whatever holiday you celebrate in december mm -hmm. um uh, i also have 12 days given, of liberal uh, 12, 12 days of liberal i have uh, been given a coupon code for foxwise.biz if people don't want to enter contests or if they just want to look at what's going on there foxwise all one word dot biz um if you use the code dgbg2017 you get 20 percent discount on anything in the store and she does custom work so oh man oh. yeah she will she will customize a bracelet <laughs> or key she has keychains she has necklaces she has everything mm -hmm. and uh so she will personalize one for a christmas gift or a holiday gift or whatever um for 20 percent off which is amazing um this jewelry store is a woman-owned, woman-run business. She's been in business since 2010. Everything's customizable. You know, whatever you want to say on it, you tell her. And uh, she's got lots of nerdware. She's got <laughs> she's got uh, Sherlock Holmes and 
um, just all kinds of cool stuff. You know, Doctor Who, everything. She's just, it's amazing. She's just got all this stuff. So go over to Fox Wise Biz, take a look. Um, like I said, we will draw draw the first drawing next week and for twelve for 11 weeks thereafter to give away something back to you guys. A resist bracelet and a $5 gift certificate to DonorsChoose.org. All right. That makes me feel better. Yeah. And it's, <laughs> and, and it's <clears throat> as always, um, if you are uh, a, a person of limited income or, or you yeah. are, are times or you're, you know, in the military and yeah. strapped. You're not you're, allowed. No, you're not allowed. <laughs> you're not allowed. This is this is our we do this every week. This is our 409th episode, consecutive episode. And we do this um, uh, because we can't help ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> because we this is our ordinary everyday conversation that we have. Including cats pawing at our legs, demanding oh, attention, yeah. which is what's happening right at this exact moment. And we get we get uh, letters and we get checks where the memo line says therapy. Um, yeah. Believe me, doing this is therapy for us, and yeah. hearing back from you is therapy for us as well. And I, I, you know, I depression runs in my family. There is there is a chemical in, inherited thing. So you know, I'm aware of that. I'm aware of family that has uh, you know. There, there is no shame in my family for seeking treatment for depression. Let me put it that way. Um, so, and I have the support of my family in doing that when I need to, including my husband. So, uh, well, and, and here's the thing that we all, uh, many of us have in common, mm-hmm. <clears throat> is that we were uh, bullied when we were kids. Yeah. And we yeah. now have a president who is a, a uh, absolutely a terrorist a political party who's, who's just absolute, a constant bully. Yeah. A sadistic terrorist who likes inflicting misery and doubt and mm-hmm. pain, and suffering. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. dread on people just because he likes it that's Mm -hmm. what he that's what gets him off what gets donald trump off is scaring the shit out of the american people scaring the hell out of them about things and taking shit away from them and making them suffer that's Mm -hmm. what he enjoys doing that's what republicans enjoy doing and this is putting the worst bully of your imagination in charge of uh, making him the most powerful man in the world yeah, and, and just, so it's P- in some ways it's PTSD just dealing with Donald Trump because it is. we've been there already in high school and grade school. Yeah, and, absolutely. And the theory was once you get out of grade school or high school or junior high or wherever, this, I, I was bullied for a lot of years um, until I got big and then that stopped. <laughs> uh, but it was – in theory, you, you, you graduate eventually into a universe of adults who are responsible and competent and they might be assholes, but they certainly don't behave like – the scumbag who you know would would chase you with his nine friends into a pit and throw rocks at you till you bled. Yeah. That behavior would stop. No, it won't. No, it hadn't. Yeah. No, it didn't. Yeah. Now it's in the White House. That yeah. exact thuggish, malignant behavior is now in the White House and now runs the entire Republican Party. You 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 take Donald Trump out of the picture tomorrow. You impeach him tomorrow. You twenty fifth amendment tomorrow. That same mentality will still run the Republican Party. And that's right. That's what has to go. Yep. So, you know, one component off the machine will make things better, will improve things somewhat, um, but the whole machine has to go. Mm-hmm. And that's probably what the balance of our podcast is about today. Well, and, and <clears throat> Donald Trump learned a lot, lot of his lies from Fox News. Yes. And he learned that lying is fun and that lying gets you somewhere from Fox News. So and lying this, doesn't come with any consequences. You can no, just lie all you want. No, and and right. people will jump up and defend and your right to do it. Yeah. And say that you weren't lying and say that you didn't never say what you said. And by the way, uh, look over there. Look what Barack Obama did. Look what some liberal did over there. Chris yep. Eliza will, will obligingly pop up every time there's a Republican atrocity and say, yes, but what about Abby Hoffman? Yeah. Yeah. And, and and this is this this thing with the guns and the bump, bump, whatever bump it's stock, called. Yes. Bump, bump stock. Yes. Bump stock. You know, Paul Ryan finding a way to blame Barack Obama for it means we can do something. It's just it's it it's just amazing to me. It's just well, and, and, and depressing. And, and 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 you can this is but it makes it amazing and depressing and predictable. Mm-hmm. In that, for example, I'm jumping into our week in review, but yeah, let's let's do a little that. bit about that. For example, um, the Trump administration has um, uh, is attempting to or is rolling back the mandatory contraception right. portion of the Affordable Care Act, which means right. effectively we're denying um, affordable. You're denying contraception by giving a whole bunch of new people the right uh, to decide what a woman gets to do and not do with her right. body. And, and your employer sense. gets to decide. Yeah, your employer, your employer gets to that pays you seven twenty five an hour gets to decide whether or not he's going to cover your contraception or not. Yeah, yep. there's there now this there certain things are undeniably true. This is incredibly cruel. Mm-hmm. It will absolutely lead to more pregnancies and probably more abortions. It will absolutely have the worst possible downstream effect uh, because it's insane. 
Yeah. And it's being done specifically because the black guy did it. Yep. And and Donald Trump and from his spite. from his inauguration cake, which was a duplicate of Barack Obama's, mm-hmm. to the free bike exchange program at the White House, to this, his agenda is very simple. I will undo everything that Negro did. Yep. And my and and the, the racist party that I am in front of will love me for it. I will make them I will make the liberals suffer by taking away their hero one piece at a time. And I will be cheered for it because the, the, my party is just like me. Well, and, and the, the fact that they are also erasing black voters from the rolls, erasing yeah. black vote voices from the, the conversation. Yeah. Uh, it's a racist party. Yes, it is. It is. Absolutely. And, and right now there is a, um, uh, an article floating around, I think, on Newsweek. I'll get the link that says, and this should come as a surprise to no one, the, the former producer on The Apprentice says that there are there's a warehouse full of tapes somewhere of, of Donald Trump making, quote, unfathomably despicable racist comments while on the set of the show, mm-hmm. which leads us into our portion of our, our of our podcast calling. But is that really news? I mean, of course, <laughs> yeah. the reason he got elected is because the Republican Party is a racist party. It's a lot of other things, too. It's a gun nut party. It's a xenophobic party. It's a misogynist party. It's a climate denying party. It's a it's a liberal. It's a certainly a liberal hating party. Boy, howdy. If you can make liberals cry, you got the Republican vote. But they don't stand for anything other than remember, other than at the top of the list, getting rid of government, gutting the government, destroying the government and providing tax cuts, eliminating taxes for rich people. That's literally all they do. And to make the pig people happy to get them to go into the polling place and pull the lever for that set of two policies, wipe out the government, tax cuts for rich people. We're going to inch by inch stick a knife in every single thing liberals have ever done. And it might hurt you. It might inflict your family. It might inflict suffering on you. But remember, it's something the black guy did. So it must be bad. And it's something liberals are in favor of, favor of, so it must be evil. Don't think beyond that. And we can rely upon you not to think beyond that because the Republican Party is a racist party. And that's what's so um, telling. If I don't mind me jumping to the Sunday shows this week. You go right ahead. Um, <laughs> the Sunday shows, is, you know, I, I've sort of tapered way off on doing my now going on 13-year feature, Sunday morning coming down. Mm -hmm. But it was fascinating to dial into the um, uh, 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 Sunday shows Mm -hmm. um, and watch what happens on Meet the Press. Because Meet the Press assembled the three fates of the Republican Party. It was was astonishing to me as when you said that, as to how it really was set up like a stage drama in that regard. It It was. was. It was Charlie Sykes. Yeah. It was Charlie Sykes and David Brooks and Danielle, somebody or other, from the American Enterprise Institute yeah. Yeah. versus Joanne Reed. That's it. With, with Chuck Todd as the moderator. <laughs> and and if, if the three conservatives, you know, the American Enterprise Institute is in charge of turning horrible racist bullshit into policy. Mm-hmm. David Brooks is in charge of turning horrible racist bullshit into shiny fairy tales of a reasonable Republican Party so that the people who fund the party and the people that he hangs out with in his little bubble don't look too closely at what the party really does. Because you really don't want to go in the sausage factory and watch that shit because there are a bunch of racist assholes in there. Just trust me. There are, the real Republican Party says David Brooks to all the rich New Yorkers that he does his writing for, all the money guys, all the CEOs, all the – all the college presidents, um, they just trust him to tell them that the Republican Party is really a bunch of Edmund Burke reading, beard stroking, deep thinkers. And don't go out into the country and look at them face to face because you'll be fucking terrified. So David Brooks has never bothered to do that. He's just invented an imaginary Republican Party that makes that bubble of New York and D.C. happy to think about. And then is Charlie Sykes, who for 25 years produced the roiling mass of racist bullshit that David Brooks would convert into happy, clappy stories and that the American Enterprise Institute would convert into public policy. And they worked together as a machine. And all three of them were on this panel being shocked, terribly shocked, that the Republican Party seems like it might at some point in the future become a racist party if we're not very careful about that. (laughs) And they're not quite there yet. But, you know, David Brooks is like, you know, a whole bunch of people in the Republican Party. It's getting really hard. And David Brooks deployed 
the word suddenly, repeatedly. Oh, no. You know, suddenly it's really hard to avoid getting tainted with this stuff. Suddenly it's really difficult to be a Republican. And Joanne Reed sat there and went, uh-huh. Uh -huh. Joanne Reed showed great restraint by <laughs> taking her heel off and yeah. beating him to a beating bloody him. pulp yep. with it. Yep. What the fuck do you mean suddenly? Let but me, let, all... let, me, let me put this high heel right in your neck, David yeah. Brooks. That's where I'd be. I'd yeah. be there, right there. Yep. But that's the story. That's the story we're going to tell, and we're going to put an American Enterprise Institute um, drone up here. We're going to put a former uh, right-wing talk radio person up here to talk about, oh, golly, you know, who knew? Oh, my God. And David Brooks to look befuddled, mm -hmm. as if it just came out of the blue sky, which for him— might be true. I happen to think he's just a deeply, deeply dishonest person. I happen to think he's the most dangerous person in this country because he tells the biggest and most sweetly toxic lie to the most people. And he's mm -hmm. most he's the most respected person on the right. Yeah. Yeah. But um, it was this was David Brooks. You might remember two years ago was scolding ta -Nehisi Coates. Yes. For dissolving the American dream. And I'm quoting now under an acid of excessive realism. <laughs> for, for saying that there's a shitload of racism going on in this country. Yeah, Two years yeah. later, David Brooks is like, holy shit, there are parts of the Republican Party that I never knew about. I never saw. My hands are fucking pristine. My hands are clean and white. But there apparently are parts of the Republican Party uh, that are racist. Uh, and if we're not very careful. Suddenly. You forgot. Suddenly, suddenly racist. Suddenly. Suddenly it's very hard to be a Republican. Suddenly it's difficult not to be tainted with all this. And he called it racial stuff. Um, man, now really, I, 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 I would I have, I would have punched him, yeah. you know, even during the commercial break. Like, come on, David. Are you for real? But that's yeah. the story. That is yeah. the Chris Eliza, Chuck Todd yeah. story that you are going to be hearing from now on. There's a firewall between those good Republicans, those good conservatives who had nothing to do with us. Granted, that racist stuff paid for your house and your wife and your kids college and your divorce, and your second, and your second wife, wife <laughs> and, your boat, and your other fucking house, and all your travel, and paid for all that shit for decades. It paid for it on the backs of people like me and my wife, and every fucking African American in this country, and every woman in this country, and every immigrant in this country that your party profited from abusing and pissing on. Mm -hmm. But now, now that it's way too late, now that the monster's built and running amok, now you'd like to get paid to sit there and jerk off to centrist quarterly and whiz, and, and whinge on about how what how to sh what a shock it is to discover this. Well, look if if the shock if you are the most ubiquitous conservative public intellectual in America who has a job at the New York Times for life and PBS for life and NBC for life and and PBS for life and it has come as a shock to you that the Republican Party might have some racism in it, you need to be fired by everyone all at once because you have one job, David Brooks. One job. And you and you just prove you are completely fucking incompetent at it, even by your own definition. But that's not going to happen because those people are, have a very important job. Their job is to keep people like me <laughs> the hell away from people like right. Chuck Todd. Right. Their job is to keep people like us the hell off of the radio and television saying things like this because that will disrupt their, their little game, which is destroying the government – Getting big Cutting tax taxes for rich people. <laughs> and it. one of the things that is hang the, the elephant in the room is how do we pay, how do we not make health care a public utility, make sure all our boomer voters are kept fat and happy, uh -huh. our, our boomer voters, Republican boomer voters are kept fat and happy and still not pay for their health care right. till death. Mm -hmm. And clearly the way to do that is just deny that that's even an issue, right. cut taxes anyway, cut Medicare anyway, cut Medicaid anyway, pretend it's not going to matter, pretend that it, it won't be an issue for those people, for your people, even though it's a huge issue for those people and your people. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, when the crisis comes, we know a Democrat will be in office. Sure. So we'll just blame it on him or her. Uh, and and that is that would be the case whether it was President Marco Rubio, whether it was President John Kasich, whether it was president. I don't care which Republican Jeb Yolan Bush in office. Jeb Bush mm -hmm. would all have Tom Price as HHS secretary, mm -hmm. and they would be looking for a way to get the Paul Ryan budget put into place, right. which which denies 
that there is a generation of pe- a very large generation of people reaching retirement age, reaching the point when they're going to have health care needs that, you know, 20 years down the road, yes, lead to death. We're all mortal. We're all going to pass away someday. Mm-hmm. But until that happens, this generation, particularly the white part of that generation, yes, expects you know, they had all new schools. From anyone born in 1946, like David Brooks was, Mm -hmm. expects to have a new school when they go to school. Oh, no, honey. Expects to have best health care when they get to health. David Brooks is like a year younger than me. Oh, that's right. Oh, my gosh. He's not Hillary Clinton's age. He's your age. He's my age. Oh, my God. Oh, no, no. These are all my peers. This is what is so fascinating about this. Yeah. This is how I can look at them right in the eye. See, that blows my mind. Yeah. And it really is. Holy shit. Holy shit. Yeah. I, yeah. I I would like to apologize for my whatever the hell my generation is. I'd yeah. like to apologize for it because we fucked up real bad. Although well, we did and we gal, didn't. The ones the ones that made it, the ones that made it into that circle of David Brooksianism, uh, did so on the coattails of boomers. They should sure, yes got yeah, in with boomers. the right boomer and telling them, and, telling them the fairy tales they want to hear. Yeah, is what and then, them in. and then went on with that. But but the generation from 46 to 64 expects, and that does include us, yep. you know, uh, expects to have their health care taken care of after 65, not 67, oh. not like like the budget that they passed yesterday assumes a 67, uh, that Medicare kicks in at 67, not 65. And think about that. By the way, here's an action that you guys can take out there in, in podcast, land. podcast land. If you Particularly if you have a Republican congressman, as we currently do. Yes, we do, currently. Um. Look up who paid for, and I tweeted this, so you can go to at Blue Gal and find my, the tweet on this. Um, there is a link to the vote on the House budget resolution of yesterday, which does assume that we will postpone the Medicare age to 67. Right. And I have confirmed that with AARP. I've confirmed that with Social Security Works, et cetera. Mm-hmm. These groups have looked at this and said, yeah, what this bill assumes is that you're going to uh, postpone, you know, you're going to extend the age for Medicare to 67. Only 18 Republicans voted no on that. And it, yep. they would be the Republican House members that you would expect would vote no. There there are some who are mm-hmm. clearly not Trumpites and not Ryanites, and they really listen to their constituents. And 18 of them voted no. Every Democrat that voted, voted against this. Mm-hmm. And every other Republican can save the 18 Voted yes. That means our, Repu- our Republican congressman voted yes to postpone the, the age for Medicare to 67. No, no. We- our Republican congressman, Rodney Davis, voted to yeah. take your mom's Medicare away. That's right. That's, That's the right. message. That's the message. Mm-hmm. And so uh, you, we need to call them out on that. And that means writing a letter to the editor mm-hmm. and asking why. Why did this happen? As I said, Ron Johnson was not covered. His his belief that that health care is not a right, that food and water and shelter is not a right, didn't make the newspaper. Mm-hmm. Don't expect anyone else to write for the newspaper what needs to be said. No. You need to write for t- to the newspaper yes, and you say can. what needs to be said. And I did have one podcast listener send me a great letter to the editor that she wrote. We want to see those. You should post them to Facebook as well. Yes. So that your your local friends see that. And when you're walking around, ta- and you know, I know it's hard sometimes to get into political conversations. Don't make it about Trump. Don't make it about Democratic versus Republican. Just say, did you hear? Rodney Davis voted yesterday on a bill that makes the Medicare age 67 instead of 65. That's taken away my mom's Medicare mm-hmm. for two years. Mm-hmm. Not, don't even say two How years. How do you feel about that? Don't I even think say that's two terrible, years. Terrible, don't you? Because because um. Don't say two years. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You, you voted to take away my absolute. mom's Medicare. Yep. Because you know what? Um, if she passes away during that time, then yep. it's forever. It's yep. And Rodney and, Davis. And they're cutting Medicare and they're cutting Medicaid. And that means nursing homes are being cut. Yep. And he voted to do that. Yes. Our congressman voted yes on that. Don't you think that's terrible? I think maybe if we, we ought to look into that. Maybe yeah. if maybe if taking Medicare away for two years is good enough, maybe we should take his congressional seat away for two years. Maybe we should take away it forever. Yeah, maybe that would be good. <laughs> I, and, and here's and, and here's the thing: I, everyone I know has noticed that everyone walks on eggshells now. Yep. Because um, we are. I don't in think that, you need to walk on eggshells about Medicare. No, no, but, but that's the <laughs> point. You just explained yeah. how to get around it. Right. Because right. right now, I know lots of people. And I'm in lots of different venues, and it is so – public conversations in large groups of people is so attenuated. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because everyone knows uh, no one knows who's pro Vichy or free French. He said, right. Citing right. Casablanca. And nobody wants to really know that that person they sort of know from the thing and, and the job yep. is a Trump supporter and is right. an asshole. Right. So everyone sort of glides through these surreal conversations and hopes not yeah. to touch anything. And it's going to be impossible to do that yep. because it's everywhere. Um, yep. I want to talk. Do you mind if I blitz through the news really fast with a purpose? You, you go right ahead. We've got about 10 more minutes <clears throat> on the podcast. All right. so. And this is my point. I'm just going to go through some stories that happened just this week. Mm -hmm. And in your mind, ask yourself, is this really news? <laughs> and, 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 and do the Obama test, which is if Barack Obama or anyone in his administration had done anything remotely like this, yeah. how soon would he have been impeached? Yep. Um, and remind yourself that just 10 months ago, the Republican Party was the party of law and order. They wanted to hold fucking hearings every time Hillary Clinton scratched her ass. Every time she sent a, 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 an oatmeal recipe off the wrong server, we're going to have her ass up here and lock her up, lock her up. That was them less than a year ago. Mm -hmm. And this is the part we liberals have to be so vigilant and really assholes about because mm -hmm. their whole thing is forgetting that ever happened. The yeah. entire media and the entire Republican Party wants you to completely forget how the, these same people behaved just 10 months ago because mm -hmm. it fucks mm -hmm. them up just the same way. They demanded that we all forget how they behaved just 10 months before Barack Obama was elected. Right, right. That's their whole shtick. If they, if we force them to keep their own behavior top of mind all the time, they can't get away with this stuff. Yeah. They cannot get away with it because they, it really does demand that you just deny, forget, etc. And they have so many willing accomplices and fellow travelers in the media that it's really hard to do. But here's the quick list. Number one, the Trump administration removed info on Puerto Rican access to water and electricity from the FEMA website. Yep. Can you believe it? The government is keeping no records documenting who met with Donald Trump at Mar-a-Lago. Yep. A former producer of The Apprentice, we did that. White House tech support believes that John Kelly's personal cell phone has been compromised. <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh... Jeff Sessions has rescinded a policy, quietly rescinded a policy that protects transgender workers from discrimination. Mm -hmm. Because he's fucking Jeff Sessions and he's yep. evil and he's evil because he works for an evil man. And uh, he's the attorney general. He's the attorney general of the United States. Uh, we'll talk about Milo the mule if we have a minute. But uh, Milo Yiannopoulos, uh, apparently this whole – not apparently. This whole email cache has been dumped in BuzzFeed's lap that shows exactly how um, Milo to Bannon to Breitbart to the White House, um, the conduit was from active, open – Stormfront Nazi groups, mm -hmm. and he was their conduit. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they they he said, "Oh, don't worry," because he worked for Breitbart. Oh, don't worry, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull together this whole sort of ideological roadmap, and uh, and uh, and uh, um, document on the alt right and who we are, and what we believe. And he just turned to all of his Nazi friends and said, "What do you guys think?" And there's a, a, a paper trail that shows how the the road from the goose stepping, real, honest to God, American skinheads and Nazis in this country. There's a straight line between from them through Milo through Bannon to the White House. Period. Mm -hmm. But again, is that news? Is anyone surprised? I'm not surprised. Um, it would be impeachable. I mean, it would be uh, it would be unthinkable in a Democratic administration, but it would also be impeachable. Donald Trump nominated a guy named Andrew Wheely. Remember that name? To be the number two at the EPA. You know what his you know what his history is, Blue Gal? He's a coal lobbyist. Yeah. And, a, and former aide to James Inhofe and a climate yeah. change denier. Uh, apparently, uh, the, the uh, little Trump kids, um, son-in-law and daughter, uh, have even more secret email server dirt that they didn't bother to share. Uh, and more emails <gasps> they shifted to a different private server to hide from the investigation of the first bunch of emails they should never have had. Remember an entire fucking campaign based on locking Hillary Clinton up for doing something yep. that is not remotely that shady? Remember that? Anybody remember I do. That? She, I she, didn't lie, she didn't lie on any uh, uh, security clearance forms no. either. We yeah. love WikiLeaks. We love yeah. WikiLeaks. Yeah. 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 Uh, Donald Trump said that the people of Puerto Rico should be very proud that more of them didn't die in, in, a, uh, in a real catastrophe like Katrina because what happened to them was not a real catastrophe. <laughs> And Have on, a paper on, towel. That's just a, a quick blitz of the highlights of this week's news, any one of which would have destroyed the Obama administration oh, yeah. or, the, or the Hillary Clinton administration. But this Kennedy is just, would have had a two-hour special every night for a month yes. about any one of those things. 
Yep. So let, let's talk about the little, um, the heavier stuff, the sort of meteor stuff. The, Rex Tillerson's Mean Girl universe. Okay. Um, Rex Tillerson, uh, I'm all in favor of any story in which Donald Trump and the word moron are used and, and bless mm-hmm. the news. They found a way through the Secretary of State. But, uh, clearly, but again, is this news that tr- Donald Trump is a moron and that someone actually got got irritated enough with him over the course of the last nine months, Mm -hmm. someone who actually had responsibility for getting something done in North Korea or wherever Mm -hmm. to say he's a fucking moron. No, that's not the news. The news part is the fact that the secretary of state is being treated like a footstool and it's putting up and Donald Trump. Well, and that was a hostage speech he gave. Yes, it was. Absolutely was. And that he and, and uh, Kelly and um, I forget who else, Mnuchin and whoever else uh, have what I call the Dead Pivot Society, which yeah. is this is their mutual dead man's pact, this mutual suicide pact where if one of them is fired, they'll all leave. Um, yeah. No, the question is not. First of all, imagine how fucked up the White House has to be uh, that they know a couple of things. One, they all have to hold hands and, and, and keep their head down because the person in the big office is completely out of his fucking mind. Mm-hmm. And the only way to keep him from from blowing the planet up and fucking up everyone's everything forever is to surround him and not let him do crazy shit. And that he he has the authority to fire any of them. But if mm-hmm. but we'll hold all together. But the thing that Tillerson and the rest of them also know is that there's no way on God's earth that the people who are supposed to keep the executive office, the executive branch in check are going to do their job. Mm-hmm. There's no way that Paul Ryan who is absolutely a spineless homunculus that that was plopped out of Ayn Rand's dying, rotting brain in, onto this earth to crawl, then learn to walk upright, and then run Congress, will ever, ever, ever get in the way of destroying the federal government and making sure that his underwriters and sponsors get their tax cut. He will mm-hmm. eat any amount of shit. He will crawl through mud. He will abase himself in every way. He will abuse everyone he knows. He will shit on everything he said he believes in to get those things done. He has he has no soul. He has no conscience. He has no spine. And that's why he's the most powerful Republican in the House of Representatives. Mitch McConnell's not going to do his job. His number one, well, yeah. number one job of the Congress, if you just think in the abstract constitutional terms, would be to put this lunatic in check. Yeah. They're the cops. They're the cops. They're the court and the cops. And the court and the cops have decided they don't want to do that job anymore because mm-hmm. it's scary. They would put, they would have Hillary Clinton clapped in irons by now. Mm-hmm. But they don't want to do that job because the people who own them um, – and that's another big story this week that I didn't touch on, which is Republican donors, you know, the people who really run the Republican Party, mm-hmm. are snapping their change purses shut and telling them, no, no, fuck you. You screwed up. We've got which is why, to- Which is why they're deciding to promise those folks that they will get rid of Obamacare without a law. Right. They'll go, because, they will do an end run around John McCain and anyone with a conscience, and they will make sure that Obamacare has gotten rid of, and we will make sure you get your tax cuts. Yeah, and they'll do it by active sabotage, by, by, by Donald Trump literally telling the people of Iowa, no, you can't stabilize your markets. And why should we be surprised by that when they sabotage the entire Supreme Court process? Yes, to steal a seat. And why to should steal we, a seat? And, why and, should we be surprised? And why should we be surprised when they spent you know six and a half years? Mm-hmm. Doing nothing, literally nothing, but sabotaging everything Barack. Filibustering their own bill to stop Barack Obama from having during success. Yeah. during the worst recession in in modern mm-hmm. history, to, on right. two wars, during disasters with massive unemployment, they didn't give a shit about any of it. Mm-hmm. It was all just leverage to to get their tax cuts. Uh, made permanent and occasionally shut the government down just to fuck with him, just because he's a liberal and he's a Democrat and he's black. And and when and, I, and they're doing that again with with Chip, yeah. which with the Children's Health Insurance Program, which expired last Saturday, and now well, it expired, and so now we want we have leverage and we want to get some negotiations going so that we can cut, uh, you know, uh, leeway time that they want to cut the um, for the for the Chip, you pay, you actually do pay a premium and they want to make you have your chip canceled if you don't pay in 30 days rather than 90 days yeah. they want uh this is republicans mm-hmm. um they there are other cuts that they want to make they want to tighten up the program you know right. so that kids will get kicked off of insurance if their parents are deadbeats you know oh, that's fraud. how we do this they right they want to limit waste fraud abuse and poor people right right that's that's the plan and, and at some point if things don't snap to the on this healthcare thing because the thing of course that 
no one ever talks about is how expensive medicine is in right. this country compared to other countries. That's what we, that's, as I said, the elephant in the room is the cost of healthcare, which we don't want to negotiate. We don't want to adjust. We don't want to make any of the stakeholders who are holding life or death over our heads take a hit. We want all of them to make whatever they w want to make in order to heal us of our whatever's going on. Right. And uh, so if a night in the hospital costs four grand, it costs four grand. Yeah. If it costs $16 million to do whatever. That's what it costs. Uh, tough. And so at some point, the, the, the stakeholders are going to have to go to war with not the stakeholders, excuse me. Mm -hmm. I'm really upset now, so the, I'm starting to lose my ability to talk. The patient. The, <laughs> the patient caretakers right. are going to have to go to war with the shareholders and stakeholders right. and say, enough. We want to care for our patients. And we have a number of them. We have a number of them by, by a lot. Yeah. Um, so. And uh, 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 that's one thing, uh, just to sort of pin this moment in history, um, we're doing this Friday afternoon, and it looks like the, the big story is going to be that President Stupid's going to try to rescind um, – the Iran nuclear deal. Uh, I don't. That's not quite. Yet. He also made some stupid comment about the calm before the storm last night, which is just him being a reality TV star. Well, and you know he didn't say two weeks. They caught him on the two weeks thing. Yeah. So he's going to start making some da 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 statement anytime there's going to be bad jobs numbers coming out for him. Hence, hence our opening uh, salvo yeah. this week about the calm before a long series of fucks, yeah. which I hope we didn't disappoint. <laughs> uh, but it's but it's, it's it's to the best of my knowledge, based on the reading I've done the last couple of days, I'm just a a, a new a, a news consumer and a reader and a, a, a citizen like you. Um, everyone uh, of responsible age and rank in the government, uh, generals and secretaries of state and so forth, have begged him not to do this because mm -hmm. it's it's just petulant and it's stupid and it's destructive and it's not really it won't fix the problem, but it's a, another. Obama administration thing I have to undo because I define myself by being the anti of that thing. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to mm -hmm. be the biggest asshole I can be. I'm going to be the cruelest son of a bitch I can be. I can, I'm going to be the biggest liar I can be because that's the anti-Obama. And that's, again, what my people – this is not the this is not the bug. This is the feature. That's what they love about him, that he's yeah. a horrible, horrible human being just like they are. And if, and if they had that kind of power, that's exactly what they'd be doing. Because they're that petty and they're that small. One last note. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a video game coming out on the 27th of October that Junior Dude wants. Uh-huh. Uh, and you used to play the 2D version. I did. Of this one. I did. What's it called again? Uh, Wolfenstein. Wolfenstein. This one is Wolfenstein 2. Castle Wolfenstein. Which is not 2. Yeah. And uh, apparently there are people on the internet and on the Twitter who are either alt-right or Trump supporter or have a flag and an eagle and a gun on their Twitter header. So all of them. Who are all bent out of shape about, why are you killing Nazis? Why are you shooting white people? Why are you calling this anti-American? Why are you putting America at war against white people? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And <laughs> uh, Wolfen Wolfen the Wolfenstein people put out an ad with marching Nazi robots and then across the, top, across the uh, screen appears... Not in my America. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, you know, this is the thing. If you think uh, you know, this is so weird to me because there's Godwin's law and people get very yeah. fussy about making Nazi comparisons. And they're, 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 the, the reason that these assholes have been allowed to fester and rise up and become the government is because we were all so tender about not comparing Calling things people to Nazis. things. And yes, it's right. very wrong. And I understand, you know, there's nothing comparable to the Holocaust. All right. right. There's nothing. It is it is inappropriate and, and grotesque to compare anything to that. And I'm sure I've done it before and I'm sure I was wrong to do it. But you know who didn't have a problem comparing people to Nazis and calling them Nazis and saying these people are bad and this is where we're headed? People like Rod Serling. Yep. About a third of all, all the Twilight Zone episodes were direct or thinly veiled references to authoritarianism coming to this country. And right. a lot of those were direct references to Hitler and Nazis and World War II and the Holocaust. Because I, my, my guess was not going to be Rod Serling. My guess was going to be Dwight Eisenhower. Yeah. But, you know, yeah, well, I was, he, didn't, he didn't mind saying we're going to go kill Nazis no, today. No, and no trouble with that. <laughs> and, and, and I understand the need to to keep our rhetoric um, precise. Right. But Particularly in, as regards the Holocaust. I agree. But the abuse of that civilized approach yep. has trapped us in this place where 
you're not allowed to say that Chuck Todd should have his head shaved and be marched around for the rest of his yeah, life with a sign right. saying, I collaborated. I collaborated. Because yep. he puts yep. on Republican apologist, Republican apologist, Republican apologist, and Joanne Reed and says, Joy, do you think Democrats are 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 in the, uh, run the risk of doing the same thing Republicans do by <laughs> um, by getting by by appealing to the worst instincts of their base? What do you think? I think yeah. Chuck Todd, you should be fired. I think you should have been fired months ago. I think the person who hired you should be fired. I think I think Melissa Harris Perry should be back on this network. I think David Brooks should get his ass back to the Acela Quarter, go home, and never be seen again. And you, Charlie Sykes, I'm gonna see you in the alley after this show. <laughs> Drift Class, each week we post to our Facebook page and website an internet kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's internet kitty is Trouble. Trouble, Trouble, Trouble. Trouble Trouble. has completed his experiments and can confirm that the corrugated cardboard box cat traps are working. You can send your internet kitty to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions! Letter on the air, unless you say otherwise. Don't forget also to download your Go Postal Union stickers. They're free. They're free. At our website, proleftpod.com. We even have the Avery labels that will fit them and if you can print them full color and have a Go Postal Unions sticker with our little cornfield uh, pussy hat logo on there and let your postal carriers know that you love them. Don't let Blue Gal lie to you. We're in the pocket of Big Avery. She won't tell you that, <laughs> but I'll tell you that. I like 5160s. I'm not going to lie. Use generic, you can use generic stickers, too. I don't care what you use, but the sticker number is important if you want them to match up when you print them out. Or you could print them on plain paper and glue them to your envelope. I don't care. Don't care. Don't care. <laughs> but the point is to let your postal carriers know yes, that you're do. on their side. You appreciate okay. what they do. Yeah. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. And yes, it can even be pumpkin spice latte. We don't care. But send us enough money to buy one. And don't forget our Amazon link at our website. We believe in buying local. And we also believe in shopping Amazon with our link if your alternative is a big box store. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution. And you can too. And again, see our website, proleftpod.com, for details on donating and also on our uh, little contest where we're giving away 12 beautiful bracelets from foxwise.biz and and a $5 gift card to donorschoose.org. All of that is at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on Facebook or Twitter, and thank you for doing that. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Oh, Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties would like much more media coverage that includes the words Trump and fucking moron. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the popping and the loving, loving, loving. Let's forget about the wine and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the flower and the switch away night. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2017, Drift Class, Blue Gal Podcast. Fake news, sparkle farters.